Hi, it's Moser with a quick tutorial on orbital hybridization, also known as 0 plus 8 plus infinity plus lazy 80 equals... What? Okay. After you've watched this video, you should be able to define orbital hybridization, you should be able to name the hybrid orbitals, and you should be able to describe the effects of orbital hybridization on molecular geometry. You should already know what orbitals are and the basic shapes of S and P orbitals, some of the basic bits of molecular geometry, and a healthy familiarity with valence electrons and the periodic table is always a good thing. So, let's talk about carbon. You amazing carbon-based life form, you. Remember carbon? Yeah, carbon. Yeah, carbon, that's the one. Six, six electrons. Yeah, that's it. Carbon. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Yeah, six electrons, right? Four valence electrons. Yeah, 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 four. Yeah, that's it. Four valence electrons. Looks really pretty. Yeah. Um, oh, makes cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool stuff. Like methane, that stuff. Yeah, cow farts. Methane. Looks like this. Central carbon and these little hydrogens out here at each end. Four points for attachment. Right, look, well, four, okay, it's got four valence electrons. Yeah, that makes sense. These, these guys are our valence. Those are inner shell. Nobody cares about inner shell electrons. So wait, how does, how does that look? Can we show how it has four points for attachment? I remember how to show this with fluorine. We could, we could show the orbitals, and we can show that it's got those two little spaces all lined up, and then they connect, and it makes F2, and it looks like that, and they just sort of, whoops, they just sort of move right together, and boom, they fit. Well, that makes perfect sense, so can we do that for carbon? Okay, well, there are my inner shell electrons, and like I said, nobody cares about them. So then 2s, 1, 2, and then 2p, 1, 2. So wait, how many sites for attachment is that? Well, okay, I, I, I see this one, and, and I see this one, and... Um, okay, I'm confused. Hmm. Are you confused? Does this give you philosophical trouble? Okay, let's talk about this. I remember it never really making sense to me that carbon had four points of attachment when I looked at it, and up here in its valence electrons, it clearly had one entirely empty orbital, and two half-filled orbitals and the two s orbitals totally full up. That can't share, can it? This is troubling. How does it get four points for attachment? And furthermore, we're talking about these. We're talking about a beach ball and a couple of drumsticks, double drumsticks, dumbbells, I don't know what you want to call them. If we're going to bond on these things, well, Remember, these are all kind of smashed in with this center kind of lined up over the nucleus on all of them. So how do you get electrons sharing on here and then on here and then on here and then on here? I don't get this. This is troubling. I hope you're troubled. Because this seems like there's something wrong with it. And in fact, there is. Those orbitals, those shapes that we've studied, the beach balls and the double drumsticks and the quadruple drumsticks and the drumsticks and donuts, all those crazy shapes, they actually get rearranged when we form covalent bonds. Of course they do. So we see what we call hybridization. And you know that a hybrid is a mix of two things. So when we talk about orbital hybridization, we're just saying that we're mixing two or more atomic orbitals that have similar energy on the same atom to produce new orbitals that have equal energy. And methane is kind of the classic example. The two main level orbitals, the S's and the P's, combine to form hybrid orbitals that we call sp3s. When this hybridization occurs, instead of this picture that we've drawn so many times, with the full 2s and the two electrons on a 2p subshell and one entirely empty 2p orbital, we get something that looks like this. Those 2s's and 2p's combine to form four orbitals. It's true, we keep the four orbitals, 
but now they're all hybrids of S's and P's, and they have equal energy, and they each have one electron. This is what gives us the chance to see orbital hybridization. And because we have those four hybrid orbitals that are equal energy, we can get a molecule like methane, this guy, with that central carbon bonding out in four directions. Hey, look at that. Now we've got that scenario that we saw with fluorine, where we have these neat little orbitals with a single electron in them that are capable of lining up and sharing electrons with something else that has an orbital with one electron in it, like, hmm, maybe hydrogen to give us CH4 or methane. That's it. Now, these orbitals are now called sp3 orbitals. They're called sp3s, oh this is so creative, because a single sp3 um, subshell or four sp3 orbitals is made up of one s orbital and three p orbitals. Wow, cool. We lose the familiar shapes that we've all come to know and love, the beach balls and the drumsticks, or the double drumsticks, and what we end up with is something that looks, well, kind of like that. Kind of weird for sure, but that's okay. SP3s aren't the only kind of hybrid orbitals that exist. We can see SP orbitals, which give us linear molecules. We can see SP2 orbitals, which give us trigonal planar molecules, and of course we're already familiar with the tetrahedrals, things like methane, that give us the sp3 orbitals. What does hybridization allow for? Well, a range of geometries that wouldn't otherwise be possible. It also allows for atoms to bond to the fullest possible ability. For instance, carbon bonding to four things instead of just two. And that, frankly, makes a lot of our world possible. Okay, do you feel like you're able to define orbital hybridization? I should hope so. Do you think you can name the hybrid orbitals? Remember, chemists are not creative at naming things. Are you able to describe the effects of orbital hybridization on molecular geometry? If you've said yes to all of these, get going. What are you doing here?